Hello again and welcome to yet another Roll20 tutorial. Today we are going to be discussing how to incorporate a character sheet into your Roll20 virtual game. Using a character sheet can be an incredibly useful tool for really streamlining the entire experience. For the most part when my party plays we do prefer to actually physically roll dice uh, and manage our character sheets ourselves, but that said, this can be an incredibly useful tool for anyone who's maybe just kind of getting into the game and getting used to it, or even as your levels start to increase more and more and you have to roll a ridiculous amount of dice to actually kind of keep track of anything, having your character sheet built in and managed for you by Roll20 can be incredibly invaluable. But before we get into it, if you have not already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It does sincerely help and I appreciate absolutely every one of them. It really does help me keep the content moving as well as be able to offer more giveaways like we have one running right now. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Is there anything you're still confused about? If you have any questions about Roll20 or D&D in general, I'd love to be able to answer them and maybe even address it in a video. So without too, too much further ado, let's just get on into it now. All right, so whenever you create your game in Roll20, you will have the option to actually change the template for the type of character sheet that you want to be able to use and to incorporate into your game. You can do that in the actual settings page for your game itself, but we're just gonna assume that we're gonna be using the standard Roll20 character sheet template, and we're not gonna be uh, adjusting that in any way. So how do we actually add a character sheet into our game? So it's really, really simple. And the way we're going to do it is actually going to be involving building the character itself within your Roll20 game. You can import them directly from other files and other things like that, but we're just going to be building it straight into the game because it's, it's a little bit more seamless and it's probably the way that most people will do it. So once we're inside of our game, if we head over to the third tab, this is our journal tab, we'll have a button over here near the top right that says add. So that's what we're going to click on right there. And then we get a couple of options here. If you're at the end, you'll have a little bit more, but we'll click on the option that says character. We then get brought up with this main page here, this large window. And this is the sort of initial stages of creating our character. All right, so once we've got it going, you can see it does automatically generate a name for us. I'm not going to bother too much with editing it. We're just going to leave it as it is. Um, we can then choose uh, whose journal this character sheet will actually appear in. I'm just going to choose mine, so we're going to leave that there. And uh, I'm also going to have it be controllable by, by myself and only me. Tags are just any other random important information you may want to bring on there, but we're just going to kind of leave that as it is. Uh, as far as the token, so what we're going to do, we are going to click on this token here. We're going to select on use selected token, so we'll automatically incorporate that and bring it in. And the avatar sheet, you can upload a custom picture or you can also drag one from your art section. But again, we're just going to kind of ignore that and leave it for the time being. Down at the bottom here, we have a couple of text boxes where we can incorporate some more information. If you have particular backstory or biographical information that you want to include for your character, make sure it's not lost or forgotten. You can add that all in here, as well as there's also some custom notes that you can provide to your GM, who only will be the only person that's actually able to see it. So once you've got ahead and finished all of this, we're just going to click on Save Changes, and then it, right away it'll bring us, bring us up this large box here uh, where we can actually begin to edit our character sheet. So we're going to head right over to the second tab here, which does say character sheet, and we're immediately prompted with a couple of options. We can uh, use the character mancer, we can create an NPC, or we can edit on the sheet directly. What we're going to do, because I think it's the most informative and helpful for most people, is actually using the character mancer, and we're going to be building the character immediately and directly within Roll20 itself. So we're going to begin just by selecting that option, and we're immediately prompted up with this, uh, this creation screen. So this is an incredibly simple process. You really just follow along step by step by step. If you have some additional information that has been added to your Roll20 compendium through things you have uh, either purchased or just added through, through custom editions, you will be able to kind of modify them here, but I don't really have that much, so we're kind of just been doing it uh, through just the, the, the base options that we have available to us, which to be honest is kind of probably what a lot of people will have. The great thing that it does allow you though is it does have some great incredible flexibility to have essentially customized anything. So you, even if you don't have something within your Roll20 compendium, you can basically build any race or background or subclass even if you don't have it within your Roll20 compendium. Let's just move along to the second step here. We'll just click on next. This is a brief introduction. And now here we are started. We are greeted with the option to uh, create, choose our race. We're just gonna choose Dragonborn. We're not gonna worry too much about it. Uh, it is the required option. It tells you initially right away you get your charisma and strength bonuses. Everything that is available to you within the, the player's handbook, you'll be able to see it all right here. Our alignment, we're going to choose chaotic good. Doesn't matter. Like I said, we're not going to be focusing on this. I'm going to choose a black dragon. 
and languages, blah, blah, that's great, cool. Let's just move on to the next step. Obviously, if you were creating this for yourself, you'd want to pay a little bit more attention to it and select whatever is specifically appropriate to your character. But as this is just for demonstration purposes, we're not going to worry too much about that. We're just going to kind of move it along to the next step. The next option is here, we get to choose our actual class. We're just gonna choose a barbarian just because it's fun and it's simple. Uh, we get to choose our skill proficiency. So, you know, we'll choose athletics and we'll also choose intimidation because why not? Those are good options for a barbarian. Again, it explains everything here. It tells you all about how rage works. We understand unarmored defense. You know, we, we get all the breakdown that you would in the player's handbook, as I mentioned, uh, but it's just kind of listed out step-by-step step here. So let's just move on to the next step, click on next, we get to choose our ability. So this is where you would actually decide your ability score uh, method, how your distribution is going to be. The only choice you really get here is custom. So we're gonna select that. Um, and I'm not gonna worry too much. I'm just gonna use the, the standard array. So we're gonna do 15, 14, 13, 12, uh, 10, and eight. So again, we're not gonna worry too much about optimizing. None of that really matters for the, for the purposes of this. This is really just for demonstration, like I mentioned before. So once we click next, we'll see that it automatically populates all of our of all of our ability scores, including the relevant modifiers that get applied because of our race that we chose. Because we chose uh, Dragonborn, we automatically get the plus two bonus of strength, which is why we're at 17. And we also automatically get the plus one bonus of charisma because of the, our Dragonborn as well. Now in the next tab, we get the option to adjust our background. So we'll select the drop down here. The only one that we have available to us is the Acolyte. But like I said before, we can just about build anything we want. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna click on custom. And you know, if you had a specific background in mind, any one of the ones for the player's handbook or anyone that you've maybe come up with with your dungeon master, you can do just about anything you want here. So we're gonna leave the, the, the name will write artisan like it says. And then we can go ahead and choose any proficiencies we want. You can select from a weapon, armor, uh, skill, tech, or language. So, you know, we can select that we're proficient in a particular skill. And then it gives us the choice of any skills that we want to select. So we can just select animal handling. Why not? And if you have anything else, you can add an additional proficiency. And again, this time, maybe we want to choose a language. And then once that populates, you'll be able to choose just about any other language. Sure, let's say we know Abyssal. And that, and that way, you can build out just about any custom character and custom background that you want, even if it's not within your Roll20 compendium. If you continue to scroll down, it just shows the, the various background traits and personality traits and things that we can add. These are all really important things that I would highly encourage you to actually fill out when you are creating your character. It really helps that developmental aspect of the game, but um, we're not going to worry about it, like I said. And the next option over here, we get to choose our equipment. We're just going to choose class equipment instead of starting wealth. So we're just going to select that. We will choose a battle axe as our martial weapon, and we'll choose a club, just the first two options. Uh, moving on to spells in the next section. Obviously, as a barbarian, we, are not we don't have any access to spells, so we're going to move on from that. Uh, next over on the features, we're obviously we're first level. We don't have any particular custom features, and as a dragonborn, we don't get any features. So again, this is just blank for now. The last section we have is our bio. So again, you can choose age, age, height, weight, race, eyes, uh, hair, skin. You can choose all these additional options here. Again, things that I would highly consider you to, to, to think about and to discuss with your DM, but we're going to move on. The last section we get over here is just a review. It just kind of shows you everything that you selected. We left out a lot, so it's not too, too happy with us. But now that we're done, we're just going to select on the last option here at the bottom right. This just says apply changes. We'll see it's going to build our character for us right away. And here we are. We're immediately presented with a pretty much completed character sheet, albeit there are a couple of things that we have ignored and we have left out. All right, so now that we actually have our character sheet completed and within our Roll20 game, how do we put it to work for us? Well, the first thing we need to do is actually assign it to the specific token that we want to use. So we're going to begin doing that just by closing out the window in the X in the top right corner. Select that. And if we click on our character token over here, if we double click on it, near the top left under the general section, there's an option that says represents character. By default, it's just going to be under generic token. But if we select, select the drop down menu, we will actually get any character that exists within our characters, within our character section of our journals tab. So we're going to select that and will automatically uh, represent that character itself. All right, so once we've done that, we're gonna click on Save Changes, we're gonna go back to our Journals tab, and then we're going to open up our character sheet once again, click on the Character Sheet option, and again, we still have everything over here, 
So what can we actually do? Well, the great news is that just about everything that's actually visible on this sheet is clickable and immediately rollable as a result. So how do we do that? Well, let's select over to our chat window tab that's near the top right corner, it's the first tab. And then if we select in the text box at the bottom as though we were gonna type a message, we can click on just about anything here and have it automatically generate a roll for us. So let's say we're about to encounter something in combat, we need to roll initiative. So if we hover over the words initiative, we can see it turns red and I can click on it and then automatically generates a roll for me, it generates a five. And this will actually also automatically place it in the turn order on the initiative uh, in the initiative counter here, we can see it right away. We have our five that has been automatically generated there. So you don't need to do anything and your DM doesn't need to do anything either. It makes it incredibly seamless and really, really easy to do. So what else can we do here? Well, we can roll any ability check. Let's say we need to make an acrobatics check. Let's click on acrobatics and automatically rolls. One thing to note about this is by default, it will be rolling with advantage. This is something you can adjust and it will be showing you how to change that in just a second. But since it's already doing it, let's just explain how that works. So as you probably know in DD 5e, rolling with advantage is rolling two d20s and you are able to select the higher of the two numbers. Because we're probably not rolling with advantage in this case, we will just select the first number that shows, which is always going to be the one on the left, obviously. So that is going to be the roll that we use. So you can actually change this and adjust it if you just go back over to your character sheet. Near the top right corner-ish, where you see all these options that say core, bio, spells, there's a little bit of a gear icon here. And that allows us to change a lot of the options. So if we select over here, near the top right corner once again, it says uh, roll guides and it says always roll advantage. And that's what's selected by default. So we can change that to be uh, advantage toggle, uh, query advantage, or never roll advantage. In the past when they have used this, we have just kind of used always roll advantage and then just select the one on the left. Uh, but another great option is to use the advantage, uh, advantage, query advantage selection. So if we choose that, let's show you how that works. Let's head back over to our core table. And now let's say we want to make an attack. So let's just select our battle axe here instead. And then we're going to get a pop-up that comes up right away. It says input value advantage. It says normal roll, advantage, or disadvantage. So we're going to actually just select a normal roll. So let's click on submit. And then we get our 15 right there. So that's our roll without advantage. Let's say we wanted to roll it with advantage. We'll do the exact same thing. Just click on it, submit. And now again, we get our two rolls and it selects the 24. It shows us as the 16 is grayed out uh, because the 24 is the higher number. Another option that we have available to us is that when rolling for attacks, we can also, in addition to having it automatically roll our attack roll, we can also automatically roll our damage. So let's head back over here. We're going to turn off the uh, query advantage. We're just going to leave it on uh, always roll with advantage. Down over here, right below, we have the option for auto roll damage. So right now, it's by default, it's set to do not roll with damage, but we're going to say auto roll damage is on. We'll head back over here to our core section. If we select our battle axe, not only do we get our rolls, we get a 19 and a 6, so our, we're going to use the 19, it's the first roll that we got, but it also rolls our damage, which is a 10. Something that also is kind of important to note here, the 6 being in red indicates that that was actually a natural 1. Our modifier is plus 5 that we can see over here, so this was a natural 1. So depending on the rolls, depending on the rule types that your GM is playing with, that might be really, really important. If you ever roll a natural 20, the number will show up in green. So like I said, just about every single thing you see here is clickable. So if we ever needed to make an animal handling check, we can just click on animal handling. And once again, it's going to roll it with advantage. If we ever need to make an intimidation check, let's just click on that. We get our, our 5 and our 13. So it's just an incredibly simple and a really, really streamlined way of actually uh, automatically rolling rolling everything for us without having to think about things and worry too much about how it all works. But now you kind of might be thinking it's a little bit cumbersome to kind of have to bring up this page. You can't see the map anymore. You don't really know what's going on. Another awesome thing that is built into Roll20 is using the mini macro bar. So let's take a look at how do we enable that and how we can take advantage of it. So we head over to our uh, the top right corner. We have the second option, second from the last option brings over to our macro section. And if we show the if we click on the slide, the option that says show macro quick bar, we'll enable that here. And you can see just below, it's kind of faint, it's hard to see, but in the bottom left corner, just below my name, we can see a little bit of a bar appears. Now, what that means is we can actually uh, put any one of these rollable options, the things that we use a lot, we can actually just have them on a quick access bar without ever having to bring up this sheet ever again. So one of the most common things you'll probably be doing is rolling initiative. So if we click and drag, 
automatically you'll see this gray box appear at the bottom of your character sheet, we can just drop our initiative in there and then automatically it appears right down to the bottom left corner. It's clickable without having to bring up this option. You'll probably also be making a lot of attacks with your battle axe, so we'll click and drag and we'll just bring it down to the bottom and it automatically shows up here. Maybe we're making a lot of intimidation checks, so again, click and drag, just bring it down to the bottom. And now, once we close out this, we head back over to our chat window, we can just roll any of these options just by clicking on it. It automatically does everything for us without actually having to have the character sheet up in front of us and kind of blocking a lot of our view of the game. Some nice additional features about the uh, the quick macro bars, they are a little customizable. You can uh, change the order of things, just when you hover over them, you'll see a little bit of a gray tab appears you can kind of just drag and drop and mix them around as they are uh, on the on the actual the, the list below. In order to get rid of something, you just click on it and then you just drag it off the page and it disappears. You're also able to adjust the color on them to make things a little bit easier to see. Just by right clicking on one, you can select the color option here and let's make this one red. So, you know, this is things to make them much more easy, easily uh, able to distinguish in the middle of the game. One last great option to be able to really take advantage of the custom character sheets in Roll20 is being able to auto-populate and fill in these, uh, these three circles that appear above your character. So we can automatically choose what they represent just by double-clicking on a character to bring up our menu. And then all the way on the right section here, we have the option for token bars. We can choose what they actually represent, and it will pull the numbers automatically just from our character sheet itself. So we can just select under the attribute here for our green one. Let's say we probably want that to be our hit points. So let's find HP, cool. Uh, our blue one, we're gonna want that to be our AC just so we don't forget. And our red one, let's say we want that to be our temporary hit points. So it's HP underscore temp, we'll select that. And if we save it, automatically it populates right away. We don't have any temporary hit points, so the red one is empty, our AC is 13, and our current hit points are also 13, so we have those automatically filled in that are just pulled directly from our character sheet without us ever having to do anything with it. All right, guys, so that's been it. That has been a quick look at uh, adding and adjusting and modifying custom character sheets within Roll20. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. I'd love to engage with you guys and hear what you're thinking about. And again, if you have not already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It does sincerely help. And again, I do absolutely appreciate every single one. But other than that, take care.